having this session from an eminent expert from Bangalore, engineer A.S. Karanth. He has been wind, in the wind power business in different roles for the last 18 years. He, is, uh, he was engaged in managing turbine manufacturing, maintenance projects and new turbine development from the concept. And presently he is working as executive advisor, business development, wind power technology, DEIF India Private Limited, a Danish company, uh, uh, reputed uh, for the turbines. And he worked as CEO of Archean Group Chennai, having a leader role in developing the 2 megawatt direct drive turbine in Europe with Dutch design team. And he was involved in manufacturing of wind turbines in India and Europe. And before this, he was Chief Executive Officer at BF Utilities Limited, Kalyani Group of Company Pune. And he has been involved in various aspects of manufacturing and uh, other uh, aspects which are related to business of wind energy. And uh, he has also worked as Vice President of Bartley Boy Ferris Limited. He managed wind turbine service provider business to operate and maintain nearly 500 wind turbines. He started a career of wind in 1995 at Renewable Energy Systems Limited, Hyderabad. And before the, this area, he had a service for 25 years, working in various projects with Birla Group in heavy <coughs> engineering and diesel engine manufacturing plants and has association of GM Caterpillar USC. He has got his engineering degree from now known as NIT Surathan and previously it was Karnataka Engineering College as you all might be knowing. So I know that uh, you are eagerly waiting to listen to him. So I'll request to kindly engage a session on wind energy. Thank you. Paul. Good morning everybody. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I am going to give a brief introduction of what is wind power, how it is really done, what's happening in India and in my second session I will be talking more about the challenges what India is facing. I would like to start basically with a, a, a video which is more of a information about the wind turbine as such. Kindly go through this. We all enjoy it. Windmills on farms, and although they may seem about as low tech as you can get, those old windmills are the predecessors for new modern wind turbines that generate electricity. The same wind that used to pump water for cattle is now turning giant wind turbines to power cities and homes. Okay, have a look at this wind farm in the California desert. A hot desert next to tall mountains, an ideal place for a lot of wind. Here's another one on the windy prairies of Wyoming. Now, today's wind turbines are much more complicated machines than the old prairie windmills, but the principle is the same. Both capture the wind's energy. Okay, here's how it works. First, a wind turbine blade works sort of like an airplane wing. Blowing air passes around both sides of the blade. The shape of the blade causes the air pressure to be uneven, higher on one side of the blade and lower on the other. And that's what makes it spin. The uneven pressure causes the blades to spin around the center of the turbine. On the top, there's a weather vane that's connected to a computer to keep the turbine turned into the wind so it captures the most energy. Now the blades are attached to a shaft, which only turns about 18 revolutions a minute. And that's not nearly fast enough to generate electricity by itself. So the rotor shaft spins a series of gears that increase the rotation up to about 1,800 revolutions per minute. And at that speed, the generator can produce a lot of electricity. So, why are wind turbines so tall? Well, the higher up you go, the windier it is. More wind naturally means more electricity. And in many cases, larger turbines can also capture wind energy more efficiently. The blades can sweep a circle in the sky as long as a football field. 
Now what's really cool is that even a small wind farm like this one in Wyoming can generate enough electricity to power more than 9,000 homes and larger farms can provide much more clean energy for our homes and businesses. I just wanted to get a feeling of what the wind turbine looks like and he also spoke about the basic principle how the wind is really hitting the wind turbine and the electrical generation is taking place and he also clarified higher the wind turbine hub height we call the hub height where the blade center is there the more the generate generation it can take place so it gave you a simple picture of what is really the wind turbine and this picture is this particular video was taken for a USA but it gives more or less a general information about all wind turbines now let me go to the first presentation which spoke, speaks about wind power So I also want to talk about wind turbines and get you some picture of different types of wind turbines and what is that it is really doing. I, before that I want to give some brief history of the wind energy. We talk about wind energy in India more or less only about two decades whereas you can see the history by looking at these pictures. I may not be able to explain every bit of picture but it gives you some idea how crude it was once upon a time. but that time there was no question of electrical energy to be generated by the wind power, wind turbines. But the wind turbines were used more for other mechanical purposes including grain grinding and also water pumping. So as you see one by one different pictures as good as in Arab deserts. These are the windmills which you can even see today in Netherlands which are also considered to be more of a tourist attraction. and. As early as 1888, you can see these small turbines of 12 kilowatt. This is Denmark. Megawatt size 1.25 started as early as 1941. And of course, in Denmark, which is supposed to be the largest ingredient of the total energy. This is offshore, one of the offshore in Europe where the turbines are placed in the sea water. These are different types of turbines. And now see the comparison as what was predominantly available few decades back and what is currently you can see the three bladed turbines. Now this is a picture of the wind map. What is generally created by the government of India by having wind mass collecting the data over a period of time spread all over India and then the data is put into a justification to say that there is some wind potential. This particular map is created to get an idea for a new development to take place and people can imagine okay this is the area where we can get the wind power and they can go and think about developing the wind power projects. And this is the potential what was gauged at that time. Of course, today this number almost 49,000 has already crossed. People are now estimating more than a 1 lakh megawatt. But you can see the red colored states which are predominantly having the wind power as of today. Tamil Nadu being the largest and the Gujarat. In fact, the Gujarat was the first one to start with the support from the Denmark government with the Vestas turbines coming as low as 65 kilowatt on those days. But today Tamil Nadu is still taking the maximum number and there is a uh, reduction in the number also because they are not able to take all that what can be generated. Wind turbine is basically in principle it converts the wind power from uh, wind power into electricity. The wind is a kinetic energy which is blowing on the turbine and that is getting converted by mechanical means of rotation. And later on the generator what is available in the turbine taking the power and spreading to the other places. It is also called as WTG. It is also called wind energy converters and there are two different types. Horizontal wind 
to a wind turbine and a vertical wind turbine. You saw this, the wind turbine, which is basically the ones which started in India very much in the earlier years, where it is to be used for water pumping. This is still available in some places, may not be working, but not removed from the ground. If you travel, you can see some parts of India having these type of turbines left as it is. This is the vertical turbine the, where the blades are really from top to bottom. It spins actually like an egg beater and the power is generated at the bottom. These turbines also are there in USA even today. Unfortunately, the development did not take place in this particular fashion. So the vertical wind turbines was only a more like a history today. And in fact, the company which I got involved first time in wind energy was manufacturing this. You can imagine those blades were wooden blades and it was being manufactured in USA and some turbines are still there in California. This is a comparison of the horizontal wind turbine and the vertical wind turbine. And this, why wind energy? This is a subject which everybody will be asking for. It has to be cost competitive. We have the other power generation by thermal, hydro, nuclear, etc. But the wind energy is considered after so many years of development and sustainability, it is becoming cost competitive. Ultimately, what is the cost competitive? Cost competitive is to be considered more from the point of annual energy cost. That means the life of the turbine is about 25 years. If you look at all the investment, what goes in, the cost of maintenance and other interest payments, etc. If you take the entire 25 years and then the revenue, what you get out of it, and you divide from the point of generation what it could make it over a period of 20 years, then the per unit cost is what is supposed to be more or less equal to today what is otherwise being generated from other source of energy. Next is, it is very convenient to start and build it. Unlike other thermal and nuclear plants, which you know will take several decades to complete it from the time of conception, Whereas the wind turbine can be done within a short period of as good as two to three years. Of course, the erection and commissioning will take place less than a year, but some amount of planning has to go before that. It also takes care of the weak grids. That means the turbine will manage with the type of grids what we have, which is unstable, which is having lots of problems in the quality of the electricity, what is being generated. And this particular wind turbine is designed these days to match the weak grids. It is consumer friendly. Of course, being a renewable energy, it is environment friendly. Some of the components what we talk about are like this. Rotor, we call it the top portion, what is on the uh, connected to the nasal. The nasal is the drive train, which is basically driving from the wind and the blades are rotated. And that particular house, what you see on top of the turbine is the nasal. And tower is, of course, the one on which the nasal is going to be kept. Monopile is the word which is used for offshore only. Control system is the brain. It is the heart of the turbine, where the turbine functioning is controlled automatically by proper programming. This is the system which is properly designed, software developed, put into the turbine. And that will be able to really give commands to every operation of the turbine, especially in terms of variation in the wind and also due to the variation in the electricity connection what the tower uh, turbine is being connected to so the control system is very very important this is how a wind turbine components look like you can see some of the parts you know this is the generator as you see and this is the point which i said hub and these are the blades this is the total thing is called nacelle and mounted on a tower and there is a gearbox also here. There are two types of turbines, one with the gearbox, one without the gearbox. In this case, it is a gearbox driven turbine. This is another picture of the turbine. This is the place where the wind is actually continuously monitored. And this is called wind vane and wind anemometer. This particular, particular uh, wind vane really understands how the wind is blowing. And based on the direction of the wind, this particular Nacelle is relocated and the blades are facing the wind direction. So there will be a yaw gear here which I will show in some other picture which will be rotated 
and continuously facing the uh, wind direction. So this wind vane will be the one which will be really monitoring the direction of the wind. And anemometer is the one which will be really measuring the wind speed, depending on the wind speed, what it is, and it will be giving the command for the blades, how it should function. This is a assembly which is kept in the shop floor before it goes on top. This is the generator and the gearbox. This is the where the blade is actually mounted. You can see the blade is mounted on a gear and it is blade is supposed to be rotated. And this particular uh, hub having three different blades are the ones which will be driven by the gear system which will make the blade pitchable. We call it as pitch system. The blade has to be facing the wind when it is low wind. As the wind picks up, the blade will be rotated and in the full wind speed as what is it rated for, the wind is actually passed across. And this is what is all done in the mechanism. There will be a controller here. The control box is kept in the hub and that is the one which will be giving the command. This is where I said controller for the pitch system. These are the blades which are right now on the ground supposed to go up. You can see the how it is being taken up blade by blade and also sometimes all the three blades with the hub taken from the ground after assembly lifted by more than one crane. One crane is not sufficient, two or three cranes will be required to hold this particular assembly and mount it onto the nacelle. First the tower will be erected, afterwards this particular nacelle is mounted, afterwards this particular assembly of the blades are kept. Now there are different manufacturers, these are the ones which are there in the world and if you want to understand some of the terminology I would like to ex uh, explain that cut in wind speed, it does not mean that always the turbine will be rotating. There are issues which people will be looking at the turbine as they pass by in the road, they will complain, what is this, they have put the wind turbine, it is not working. One should understand the wind turbine cannot work unless there is wind, unless there is breeze. And the point is more important, it cannot rotate just because the wind is as low as 1 meter per second or 2 meter per second. The design is in such a manner that the turbine will start rotating only in the average of 2 to 3 meters per second. That is called cutting wind speed. The wind vane will be looking at it, wind anemometer will be looking at it and then it will give a command to connect the electrical system and then the generation will start. Cutting wind speed is, that is the way it is important. You can also say cut out wind speed. Why the, it cannot rotate and it cannot generate when the high winds are there. The winds are there too much also, it is not good enough for the turbine. Mechanical systems are designed in such a manner, it should not become harmful and the winds can blow and even the turbine can fall apart. For that reason, they keep a condition that there is a cut out wind speed. Generally, the optimum rating of the turbine, let's say 12 meters per second and the rating is about, let's say, 1 megawatt. 1 megawatt will be generated at 12 meters per second. That is the way the power curve is decided. So anything more than 12 meters per second, the turbine is kept running for some more time up to the harmful speed. Harmful wind speed is something like 25 meters per second. The moment the wind is really blowing at 25 meters per second, the machine is kept switched off. So it could be the either way when you see the turbine working or not working, you will consider that the wind turbine after putting so much of investment is not working. But it is because of these two technical information people, many of them are not knowing. Another very interesting part is we say wind turbine is generating power. But wind turbine can generate power only when there is grid availability. You will laugh at it. Why there should be grid availability? It is supposed to give the power to the grid, but it has to get connected. It is like having a water storage tank. And if you don't have the pipeline, what is the point is the water will flow to the other end. Only when you connect and you have the pipeline, the water can flow. Same thing in the wind turbine. If the power is not available, let's say the utility company like EB has switched off the power for some reason, or there is a downtime, or there is a breakdown in the transmission line, wind turbine cannot generate. It doesn't mean that the wind turbine is there and power is get generated. Where it can go? So the grid is most important. So some of the cases what you see on the road or in the turbines when you pass by, 
it is not rotating could be also due to the power is not available grid is switched off this is another problem now we call upwind and downwind upwind is where the blades are facing the wind direction the downwind is the one in which the back the wind is blowing generally it is of uh, most of the turbines are upwind downwind machines are there especially for two blade machines the 250 kilowatt machines which i was manufacturing 95 98 had a downwind machine because it was only two blade machines you can see some picture later ha wt and vat i already explained you horizontal and vertical machines hub height it is the hub height where the spinning takes place that is the height at which the turbines are really located and these days for getting higher winds they take the tower as high as possible today people are making in india almost 80 meter 100 meter hub heights so the higher the hub height you need to have the higher and larger towers towers can be tubular towers towers can be lattice towers as what you see in the transmission lines mean wind speed is the wind speed which has to be measured over a period of time parking and idling and power output is the rating at which the turbine is nomenclature is given rated power is the same thing i said 1 megawatt 2 megawatt 3 megawatt now the components which i already explained blade nacelle is that box what you see the tower on which the nacelle is being seated hub is the one where the three blades are connected rotor is the total rotor and the rotor diameter is another feature the higher the rotor diameter the higher the generation takes place so the same turbine same design people starts increasing the rotor diameter that means they change the blades they go for a larger rotor diameter and increase the power it is more so required when you get into putting the turbines in lower wind regimes the wind regimes in the india conditions were earlier in the range of 8 to 10 meters 7 meters and all in tamil nadu and some part of gujarat of late what is left over for putting the projects our average is only 6 to 7 meters to capture even that 6 meter low wind conditions people are now putting larger rotor diameter for the same megawatt let's say 1.5 megawatt 82 meter diameter they are finding the generation is not adequate the rest of the technology is same rest of the material is same so they are putting higher rotor diameter going for 100 meter 110 meter and that is the way the rotor diameter is also very important and the swept area is the diameter and the area which is cutting the wind it's called swept area yaw is the mechanism on which that nacelle is kept and it is expected to rotate and face the direction and there is a gear and the gear is having a drive motor which i will show you some some other picture and the command is given to the motor and it will say you are in a wrong direction now you look, locate yourself to the wind direction that is what is called yawing we call the word as yawing means it is rotating on the particular location at the time of rotation there will be a necessity of the machine to be not generating it will be kept on a idling condition and the machine will slowly rotate and rotation also in some wind conditions the direction keeps changing in only in one direction afternoon one, one direction second moving night it is gone different direction morning it is coming again in this direction in this situation what happens after a particular period it could be a day it could be two days it could be three days the ro machine has already rotated twice or thrice if it starts rotating like that there is a danger for the cables which are coming from top to the bottom the cable get twisted and the cables can get kicked off and that will be an accident so there will be a mechanism to monitor the yawing and the pitching arrangement how how much it has already rotated so there will be a switch for that after rotation two or three depending upon the design the machine is stopped and it is brought back forcibly to the original direction and then it starts again generating and it will be subject to for another change of direction so the market today has been 20% growth and there is a you know growth necessity because there is a climate change concern has been created last few years everybody is talking about co2 being more rampant because of other issues so renewable energy wind energy especially which is not really having any other ingredient to create this particular co2 that is where it is more favored now and there is a security of supply also we don't need to really depend upon the input 
we don't need to go and borrow the oil we don't need to go and cut the wood to have a thermal coal etc so it also combats the oil prices which is continuously fluctuating as far as the wind is concerned you don't need to pay anything for it so this is another picture of the wind turbine as it is getting assembled you can see some of the components there this is another type of turbine what what you see here is a no gearbox this is a direct drive this is a direct generator mounted here and this is the hub and this is also turbine which are available in india enercon was the earlier name today it is called windworld one company which is basically a german technology this is the direct drive without a gearbox there has been apprehension that the gearbox is a additional item it has got gears it has to have oil it will be more you know complicated in terms of operation and maintenance the gear oil has to be monitored so people sometimes prefer this particular type direct drive but there is another issue for a direct drive the turbine size goes bigger and bigger whereas in gearbox and generator generator will be very small here the power is directly connected with the generator to the grid connection of course there will be a necessity of first generating in ac alternate current then converting into a dc by thyristor and igbts and inverters etc and then connecting to the uh, ac current and the ac the last stage of ac current conversion is the one which will get connected to the grid ac dc ac there is so much of electronics in this power handling is very high of the order but there is no gearbox the size of the turbine on top the nacelle only the generator just to give an idea when i got involved in developing a 2 megawatt machine in holland 70 ton is the just the nacelle generator side portion of the machine for a 2 megawatt machine so direct drive is one other apprehension is the size is going to be bigger it is going to be weighing larger and larger i also had the opportunity of the same company enercon in germany go on top of 7 and 1/2 megawatt turbine which is 120 meter diameter of rotor and the size of the particular nacelle when you go up it is like a ship three deck go on top of it erected commissioned very close to the uh, european harbor this is other pictures simple one to a complicated one and combination there are different types we call it as variable speed which is earlier it used to be called stall turbines there is uh, unusual and active stall not available these days these days are all available is only pitch that is partial pitch and a full pitch and also the constant speed is there which are using asynchronous generator and also open slip is there for a pitch machine also these machines are available from 600 kilowatt up to 2 2.5 megawatt of about 2 and half megawatt it is only gearbox and dfid these are the different types of machines available in india of different ratings it may not be really uh, uh, i have sent this uh, slide for you know your information just i wanted to show show how the ratings of different types are available in india it started as low as 65 kilowatt 350 kilowatt 250 kilowatt 400 kilowatt 600 kilowatt 750 kilowatt 1 megawatt 1.25 1.5 1.65 1.8 2 2.25 2.1 2.5 uh, uh, is the last one today as it is currently running there may be new turbines coming to india in the range of 2.8 and 3 megawatt what i wanted to say is in india unfortunately we have gone into too many models it is like seeing so many types of cars in the market today but for a sustainability of the wind business they according to my personal opinion there should have been a very standard few models only to get the more numbers put that way you can get more components easily made available by the sub, sub vendors this is what china did it. how did china grow so fast few years back china was even lower than us in terms of the number of turbines and the megawatt what has been put but they shot up but what did they do they really planned very nicely said all the people should make only 1.5 megawatt that is the way they brought the ruling initially and they encouraged the government really encouraged all the manufacturers to say please including the international players 
who wanted to come and do the business, they were also said 1.5 megawatt. And you don't believe because of that 1.5 megawatt rating, all the components and the parts what go with it also gets standardized. And that becomes necessary for getting more and more number manufactured. The more the number you manufacture the parts, it is easy to make it available. Otherwise, today you make different different ratings. Each rating will go for a different manufacturing method, process, design, etc. So in India, we have really gone into that haywire and we are struggling according to me. This is again from the point of different states. It may not be very much visible. As I told you, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. These are some of the manufacturers who have already gone. I have got up to 201112 uh, as the configuration of different manufacturers, what different megawatt they have really installed. You can see the Sudan supposed to be the, the highest in the uh, production. Yanarkan was standing the next. Of course, now the imbalance has already changed. And now today, Sudan also is mediocre. Other people are taking over. As I said, this is the way that states are faring. This is again up to 2012. Today, 17,967. What was in 2012? We have crossed 20,000 as of December 31st. There are different rates for the power which is generated. I would like to say here, what do you mean by rate? The power what gets generated from the wind farm can be sold to the utility company. There are two ways of selling the power. One, you set up your wind farm for your own captive use. The business houses put up the wind farm for their own captive. That means they put up the wind farm where the wind is available. And they have a contract with the utility company, EB company, SD board company, where the power is input there. And then they are having a factory here. They have the consumption in their place and they need to use the power. Instead of taking the power, they are taking the power from the UB, EB, it could be PSEB, it could be TNEB, it could be MSCB, whoever it is. They take the power, but while paying the money to them for the number of units they consume, they adjust the power what was generated by them in a different location. This is basically a bankable adjustment. And the government allows that to happen. And this is where it's called captive. In other case, I generate, I don't need consumption, I don't have requirement, I sell it to the utility company. And the utility company, again EB, is paying and this payment is made at per unit rate. This is the rate at which it will be paid by them. And how it is decided, this is decided by regulating commission. And there is a CERC and there is a state regulating commission which decides the power consumption regularly this year, this is the rate, next year, this is the rate, like that, how they fix your home and industry power consumption rates, same way the renewable energy rates also is fixed periodically. And the rates are fixed differently for solar, differently for wind, differently for biomass, all that is done based on assumption of what is the project cost, what is the operation and maintenance cost, how much the number of years it can be generated, how much should be the reasonable return should be there for investment based on that regulating commission announces this particular uh, buying rate. This is what varies from state to state. It varies from three and a half rupees as low as in Tamil Nadu. It is going up to five rupees also. Interestingly, these years, last two, three years, Tamil, uh, Maharashtra has come with a better policy saying that in the same state, there may be wind availability different uh, conditions. One may be a really good wind condition, the other may be a very poor wind condition. So the power projects, what is put in a low wind conditions will get a better rate and the, the projects which are put in a high wind condition, they will get a lower rate. These type of classifications also have started only in Maharashtra. This is the cumulative different states which are uh, earlier Charles also showed the same thing. This is again Anakan turbine just to get the idea of how big it is, what sort of cranes have to work to put up the turbines. You can see one installation is going on the second picture. This is what is the size of the turbine in the shock flow. This is a generator being mounted into the main gen uh, nasal condition. You can see this is the generator one portion and this will go and mount on the second portion. Already one portion of the generator is mounted. Generator itself is split into two. This is as good as 
5 megawatt, 7 megawatt machines in Germany. Of course, the formula for generation is basically power is equal to where power is related to area, rotor area, velocity, and density. And we call about the wind speed is the main thing, which is the velocity. And rotor area is the A. Air density is again depends on the height at which these particular wind turbines are located. Now the turbine manufacturers in India and others, I just wanted to list out, these are all the names, what I have highlighted by different color, they are available in India. GE, Sudlan, earlier it is called Windworld, today, uh, Enercon, today it is called Windworld, Sriram EPC, Pioneer Wincon, Winwin, Garuda, Inox, Region, Gamesa, Global Wind Power. So many manufacturers are in India, we are ranging from 250 kilowatt machine, which is still currently made up to 2.1 megawatt by Sudlan and 2.5 by Global Wind. Roughly 30%, I said 20% earlier, but up to 2011, we had a growth of 30% every year and it was changed later. And this is how the installed wind world, uh, installed uh, power, how it is, you know, increased over a period of time. Now it is more than 300, 400,000, 300,000 already it has crossed. This was earlier as 2012. To look at the, how the turbine is connected, I just wanted to get a picture. This is the turbine, what I am showing here, and it is connected to the grid here by 33 kV line, or generally 33 kV line comes up to the turbine, and you have a switch here, and there has to be a transformer, because the turbine generates at different voltages. Some are 440, some are 690. So there has to be a transformer capacity of the wind turbine. Let's say it is 2.25 MVA for a 2 megawatt machine. A transformer is provided there and then it is transferred to the one uh, grid connection. But this particular turbine con consists of the converter if it's a direct drive and also generation with its own auxiliary loads. Each turbine again has its own gearboxes, lubrication system, etc. And that power also has to be consumed from what it gets generated. If you look at the project configuration, it starts from really looking at a site and after that you have to really ship the components there, you have to erect, make a foundation for the location and then you have to install the turbine, first of all the foundation, the tower and the machine etc. And you have to connect to the grid connection, bring the lines, distribute it in the wind form, bring it to each turbine as I mentioned about having a transformer connecting it and then you come and commission it. That means you test the turbine working there, commission it, charge it and then they commence the operation of generation. It will be nearly one and a half years or minimum for starting from the conceptual stage of saying that I am going to go and start my turbine erection. This is how the growth has been in India also. This is the way it is going. Today it is only about as I said you 20,000, it will be more than that, up 10-11%, this is the market as of today, projection is going on. Average wind turbine size from the turbines, whatever has been started very much early as 250 kilowatt, today it is changing with more and more megawatt class machines being put, the average is about 1.25 megawatt. Of late, only those turbines are really put and not the smaller turbines. The business for the smaller turbines have been, you know, receding now. One of the other reason it is receding because the regulations, policy regulations have changed. Last year they removed the active dep depreciation. Earlier days the depreciation used to be 80 percent. You put up a turbine, let's say 4 crores and you can get the depreciation in your business for the 4 crore 80 percent of that money. So that what otherwise you pay the tax for your business can be kept into your business rotation. So that particular depreciation formula which was really running all these years for all the manufacturers, all the turbine, all the project developers has been removed. Today only incentive government is giving is a 50 paisa subsidy for every unit is generated. It will be given for all the units what is generated up to a specific quantum of generation and also they will give up to let's say 5 years or 10 years, I don't remember exactly, but this is called uh, uh, GBA, Generation Based Incentive. This Generation Based Incentive is the only current available 
incentive for the wind turbine, wind, wind power. But people have been always remarking that the wind power has got too much of subsidy, too much of dole, government is spending a lot of money. Yes, government is spending only to encourage the better growth and get the more and more renewable energy installed in the country, for which they give some concession about the duty of the components what are imported. There is a concessional duty, let's say about 2 to 3 percent for the certified turbines. Other than that, the earlier days, whatever the concept was there that the government is giving a lot of free money to the wind power projects is not at all true. Of course, there has been an uh, issue of penetration. The more and more wind power you install, all of us know the wind power is not continuous. It is not, wind is not going to blow the same way 365 days, 24 hours. So there is not available wind for generating. So the electricity board which depend on taking our power is always concerned saying that they cannot have the continuous power. Why should I take it yours? Why should I depend on you? Let me have my own hydro or thermal or nuclear. So there is always a battle between the utility company and the project developers. This particular penetration is also another issue from the point of too much of wind power, the grid will become unstable. Whenever the wind re reduces, the power generation reduces and they have to really manage with the other power sources. So this particular issue is what is more important to be tackled. Then the question will come, how are the other countries are managing? As I mentioned, Denmark is having 40% wind power. That means amongst the power, what resources they have, they are generating 40% only from wind power. For information, in December they were generating more than 125%. How? That means their wind capacity was so much that the power what got generated was distributed to other countries. So there has to be a good management system in the power grid management to see that we take more and more wind power. Adding to that, the grid has to be very, very stable. And there are some issues about power quality is also seen because the induction generators, what are used in wind turbines, need reactive power. It will be drawing the reactive power from the grid system. So the grid has to be very, very strong and stable. And the scheduling is what is more important today people have to tell how much I will generate wind power ahead of time and based on that depending on the wind conditions saying that winds are going to be low this season or tomorrow day of tomorrow the scheduling can be managed and the power grid corporation can take care of that there has to be good cooperation as I mentioned between the planners and project developers now I want to say something about efficiency. Everybody says, what is efficiency of a wind turbine when compared to thermal power, nuclear power, etc. Efficiency is generally termed in wind power is, as mentioned here, what is the amount produced over time and divided by power that would have been produced if that rating of the wind turbine is able to generate full rating power all the time. That is 365 days, 24 hours. The quantum of energy what is generated comes as low as you know 20 to 30 percent only. That is also called as plant load factor, capacity factor. That is a layman language and that is also can be considered as efficiency. According to me, unless the plant load factor is as good as 24 percent, 20 percent and above, the wind turbine project should not be put at all. Unfortunately, it is not so. Many of the wind turbine projects are running as low as 20% and today better turbines are coming, larger capacity turbines are coming, better technology turbines are coming and because of that the average has really gone up from as low what it was few years back 14%, 15% all over India has now gone up to just about 20%. That is what is, if you see one megawatt turbine with a 24 to 26% plant load factor, if it is there, it can generate 20 lakhs unit. It is as good as for 1000 homes can be electrified over a period of one year if you say the consumption is average about 200 units. Next is the forecast. 
the challenge for the wind power projects to really tell what should be the power ahead of time and there are some methods to do that the schemes have come the government also is insisting today for information the law has come but it is not fully implemented every 15 minutes ahead of time should be told what will be the power and this information has to be transferred to the uh, power grid uh, management uh, center load dispatch center and if you really do a good uh, management of this forecasting this is the way you can match what was the forecast and what was really the generation this is one of the uh, picture which shows where in other countries they are able to do only difference between other country and our country is in our country it has been asked to be done by the project developer whereas there it is the grid people themselves are managing they know much better how to handle their wind conditions they have more scientific methods and they are able to do it here a 10 megawatt and above project developer is asked to forecast he has to send the information to the dispatch center that 24 hours ahead of me this will be the power generation from my 10 megawatt wind farm every 15 minutes and he is allowed to change it much uh, ahead of time let's say one hour before and that one hour before he can change it and correct it and the penalty is there if you are varying more than plus or minus 30 percent let's say my megawatt is 10 megawatt wind form and I say 7 megawatt is my wind generation power and I give the indication to him if really if I am not able to generate 50 30 percent less than that 7 megawatt what I said then I am really penalized unfortunately the government has still not started with the stick to charge that but one day it will come very soon but people have started practicing how to do this that is what is currently happening another subject I would like to speak about is repowering you also know that India started the wind power to almost two decades back at that time they went and put all the turbines in a very good windy conditions high wind conditions but the turbines are low technology low hub height small turbines and they are already lying there they are not even completed 20 years its lifetime but we are really now falling short of good wind conditions good wind conditions is the average about 8 meters 7 meters like that the question is coming why not we remove those old wind turbines which are of low rating and unnecessarily occupying places where very good winds are there and we know good winds are there it has been generating it is not there is a project failure so repowering this is the word which has been coined where you take out the old turbines and put the new turbines and one of the uh, project which has been done some other country I just want to show how so many turbines were there on top as you see in the picture and how it has been replaced by uh, a larger turbine higher hub heights but different spacing and they are working and this is how the picture shows what is the spacing earlier how many were there 6 of 1 megawatt that is 6 megawatt and they went to for 4 turbines only of a larger capacity of 3.4 megawatt but they are able to get instead of 6 megawatts from the same location they got 13.6 this is the repowering in India it has just started but there are so many impediments which need to be looked at it to really utilize the potential what is really getting according to me unutilized underutilized you can see one of the picture how a big blade it is a 80 meter blade this has to be transported from a manufacturer blade manufacturer to the location this is right now this picture is the one which is going for a test the 80 meter blade is going for a test of fatigue and complete cycling of the blade conditions are being done in one of the uh, locations in Germany to my advantage this blade manufacturing location is the one which I use for manufacturing 43 meter blade three years back or four years back now you see 82 meter blade is being sent in the same town where I, this highways were not there when I was really getting involved on a 43 meter blade and I was wondering at that time how to bring those 43 meter blade to India how to transfer it to the seashore and she put it in the boat and bring it to India and today I see 83 meter blade is being already transported the change takes place so fast I visited the testing place also where 80 meter blade was under test 
Safety is another issue. People think that put the turbine, you can forget it. People do not know it is also very, very risky in many places if safety standards are not taken care. This is one picture where the entire turbine has gone into fire for some reason. But the point what I want to say is turbine just because it is there, it can be forgotten. No. People have to be very, very careful what they do. They have to do much more uh, uh, you know, uh, clarity. And according to me, wind turbine is not an item like any other mechanical device which can forgive you for the mistakes what you do. If you are in a car, if something goes wrong, you can stop it, you can attend to it. If there is a diesel genset, if something goes wrong, it is always on the ground, you can go and attend to it. Maximum there may be a shaft breaking, some blast or something within that area. This is not like that. This will really, really be harmful to many of the people who live nearby. There was a case, you must be remembering if you can, a few years back in Gujarat, there was such a cyclonic storm, all the turbines, <laughs> blades have flown kilometers. Blades have been removed from the turbine and flown because of the type of turbine you know, wind conditions. So safety is another thing which I want to inform. This is a picture of the turbine, how it is burning amongst the other turbines. This is one other turbine, type of turbine which is both sides rotor is kept and it is rotated. This is still not popular. This is only a design someone has tried and put it in the picture. This is what the first presentation I would like to speak about. Then I would like to show you a video again on a wind turbine from You have any questions? You can answer before picture comes. This is from the Kota Bag, sir. Pardon me? Sir, this is Anu Krishna from Kota, Government Polytechnic Kota Bag, sir. I couldn't get you. Sir, from Government Polytechnic Kota Bag. Uh, hello, I'm always, sir. Hello. Okay. 
Sir, in fact, you told me about the wind power generation. You told that there is some grid concept is there. Suppose there is high speed. We are if we are not. We are going to switch off the turbines. Is there no provision by which we can store that energy when we have going and we can save that energy later on? We can use that energy. Yeah, yeah. Energy storage is a totally another subject which is coming into. Uh, uh, stability. Uh, as of today, such large power, we are not in a position to store. But uh, things are really coming to some shape. They are coming with the different types of batteries where it can be done. There are compressed air systems are there, which are also used for storing the energy. This is still in a very primitive stage, but one day or the other, it will come. Then only the improvements can take place and sustainability will increase. Your point is well taken. you are talking about one windmill versus another windmill in the same wind form you are talking about no no so i am talking there are plenty of windmill is there yeah. suppose one windmill is being moving suppose below minimum velocity because you told yeah somewhere your uh, speech is uh, getting disconnected i am not able to hear Not a single day goes by without mention of the environmental and climate challenges facing our world. The ice caps are melting and oceans are rising as we quest for answers and durable solutions. The good news is that there are sustainable answers and solutions. One of the most convincing is wind power. In this program, we will see how wind power can contribute to our common challenge to combat climate changes by reducing the world's CO2 emissions without compromising our energy's security of supply. Denmark has led the way with large-scale wind power. We will see how this achievement has been accomplished and how Denmark plans to proceed even further on a larger scale, exploiting the enormous power of nature to create CO2-free electricity to consumers wherever they are and whenever they need it. Wind is one of the most abundant natural energy sources in the world. And it's cheap, but it's tricky because it fluctuates. The main challenge with wind energy is to ensure a constant and reliable source of energy supply to consumers. And how do we do that when the energy source fluctuates as wind conditions change? This is the amazing story of how to integrate large amounts of wind energy into the power system. The EU has set a target that by 2020, renewable energy must make up 20% of the total energy consumption. Around the globe, countries aim to reach similar targets. And the potential for wind power is huge. The wind power share of electricity consumption varies a lot from country to country. With a 20% share, Denmark is the leading wind power nation of the world. Let's go to the Danish national grid to the transmission system operator to see how they handle 20% wind power in the electrical power system. In 1980, all the electricity in Denmark was generated by 16 power stations. At that time, adjusting the electricity generation to suit the electricity consumption was, by and large, a question of throwing more or less fuel into the boilers at the power stations as and when it was needed. Today, the situation is different. The power stations still generate a substantial proportion of the energy. However, a fertile undergrowth of energy producers has emerged. Small local cogeneration plants, solar heating systems, and last but not least, 
needs approximately 5,500 wind turbines. The task of integrating all the electricity generated by the numerous producers is managed here at the National Grid, the transmission system operator in Denmark. Connecting a few wind turbines to a country's power grid is not a problem. The large challenge is when thousands of wind turbines are connected to the power grid and wind power becomes a large part of consumption. For what do we do with the power when the wind is so strong that we generate more power than we can consume? And where will the power come from when there is no wind? Even with the high wind power production averaging 20% of Denmark's consumption, a high amount of power production is still needed from other forms of power generation. Denmark has some of the most efficient power plants in the world, using both fossil fuel and CO2 neutral biomass. Normally, power plants are not built to a flexible production resulting from fluctuating wind power. But Danish power plants have a high capacity to regulate production. Which main ingredients is Denmark using in order to make wind integration into the power system a success? A wind power share of approximately 20% in Denmark has been reached by employing a number of tools. Naturally, it takes a great number of wind turbines. In Denmark, an effective scheme subsidizes the generation of electricity from wind turbines. Furthermore, they can be connected to the grid for free. Legislation and planning ensure that wind power is first in line to the grid, and a national plan establishes where wind turbines can be erected. A strong and well-developed electricity grid within Denmark and to the neighboring countries transmits energy from the wind turbines out to where consumers are. Denmark is part of a strong electricity market where electricity can be bought and sold, all in all, to accommodate supply and demand and to ensure competitive and fair prices for electricity. A national transmission system operator ensures that the actual generation of electricity and its actual consumption always balance by asking the power stations to step on the brakes or to step on the accelerator or through import and export to neighboring countries. Down at the Danish National Grid Control Center, it's been a hive of activity for some hours. A storm has just passed. In the run-up to a storm, Denmark produces a large amount of wind power. Power stations are, however, still kept in operation, for should the wind speed increase to 25 meters per second, then, for security reasons, wind turbines must be shut down. And when the storm abates, the power stations can once again get ready to take over. All this is taken care of here at the control center. Here we have an animation of what happened to wind power generation in western Denmark during the storm. Now in the hours before the storm, you can see that the wind production was running at a maximum, indicated by the color yellow, and the surplus energy is immediately exported. Now we're nearing the moment when the storm hits the coast, the winds increase dramatically, and one by one, the wind turbines are shut down. There. In these vital minutes and seconds, the people here at the National Grid Control Room are really put to the test. The whole electricity supply for Western Denmark alters in a moment. Wind energy production is close to zero. Electricity export stops abruptly, and Western Denmark goes from electricity provided by wind energy to other forms of power production. Now, when the storm has passed, the wind turbines in western Denmark can start up again. At the same time that the storm crosses over to eastern Denmark, the situation here now repeats itself over there. Right now, the people in the control room can catch their breaths. Wind power has been exploited perfectly, producing CO2-free electricity, and the users haven't even noticed it. Despite the huge challenges of integrating wind power into the grid, Denmark has no intention of settling at 20% wind power. 20% wind power in Denmark is only a partial target. Here we see plans for the future expansion of wind power in Denmark. A share of up to 50% wind power of the total electricity consumption is the target by the year 2000. And 20. And how will this happen? Well, that we can see here. 
in the future, the erection of wind turbines in Denmark will, to a far greater extent, be offshore. The green columns here represent the expansion capacity of the land-based wind turbines, which will level out. The blue columns represent the wind capacity of the offshore wind turbines, which by the year 2020 will account for approximately one-third of the total wind capacity in Denmark. But how will Denmark manage a 50% wind power share, considering the difficulties of integrating nearly a half of that today? Let's go to Copenhagen and get some answers. One of the keys to Denmark's ambition to go from 20 to 50% wind power is located here. A charger for electric batteries. Thousands of electric cars, together with heat pumps for heating, will draw on a large proportion of the energy generated by the new wind turbines, thus reducing the CO2 emissions in the transport and heating sectors. Furthermore, electric cars do not only come in the size of this one here. Many of the big car manufacturers already have electric car models in more conventional sizes ready to be launched onto the market. In the near future, a smart grid system will make it possible to charge your car either quickly or cheaply. The latter, naturally, when most electricity is available, typically at night or when it is windy. Let's hear what the Danish Minister for Climate and Energy thinks about wind power. You know, it's a country who has a lot of renewables and particularly wind energy. Of course, it's interesting if we can find ways to use also the surplus power being generated when it, it blows a lot, when the wind is very strong. So if we could sort of store it in batteries and drive on these batteries, then of course it would be extremely interesting, not only for Denmark, but to the whole world. Besides electrical cars and heat pumps, a variety of new tools are needed in order to reach a 50% wind power share of the electricity consumption. These tools could come into play as Denmark expands its wind power production with new and possible future offshore wind farms geographically spread around the country. One of the most interesting projects Denmark is looking into is Krieger's Flak in the Baltic Sea. Both Denmark, Sweden and Germany plan offshore wind farms in the area, and instead of each country separately carrying wind power ashore from its own offshore wind farms, the farms are connected, so that it's possible not only to carry the power ashore, but also to exchange power among the three countries. It could become the world's first offshore mini super grid, paving the way for future supergrids in the North Sea and the Mediterranean. In this way, the project is highly internationally focused and supported by the EU. Well, my electric car has been recharged here in Copenhagen. It's time to move on. For many, the Danish wind case will seem like a distant dream of the future. But climate changes mean that we must find sustainable solutions for the energy we use. Wind power is one of many possibilities, but more than any other renewable energy, the prospect of wind power reducing the world's CO2 emissions by 10 billion tons by the year 2020 is not a distant dream. As we've seen from the example from Denmark, there are sustainable solutions for integrating wind power into an electricity grid. So, when we talk about energy, the future is green. And in Denmark, the future has already begun. I think this, this video gave already one uh, information about the question which was just raised by somebody in Kota about the storage. And uh, this is the way things are going to change. And also I want to point out this particular <coughs> video was taken almost few years back when it was 20 year percent for Denmark, but today it is already crossed 40 percent. Questions? Any more? I didn't uh, get the question, what was being uh, 
uh, in between asked during the film shown about turbine behind turbine something somebody was asking can you repeat it please korun bol technique kota bag sir your mic is mute उटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेट
that uh, there is a possibility of rotating it in a higher speed and collect it, push it to the next turbine. Unfortunately, it is not possible. Okay, sir. And sir, what is the effect of the density of the air? You told also we, during calculation of the formula generation of the power, you showed the aspect one parameter, the density of the air. So how air, it is going to be? Air, yeah. air density, if you see the formula, it yes, has sir. a value. The higher the value, there will be better generation. That is a factor there. It's a multiplication factor. Air density higher will be better. So okay, if you, you go at a higher altitude, there will be a better air density. So air density is also a factor. And the calculations are done and then to assess what could be the wind generation, they collaborate that value after measuring the air density at different heights. Air density also varies from the mean sea level of the location of the wind forms. Sir, sir, one more sir. And what about this sir, material of the construction as far the blade is concerned, sir? Because the blade is so giant, and so design consideration must be the score. For what are the optimum conditions? Optimum condition is not there. Each blade is designed thoroughly from the point of designing the turbine itself. These are all FRP material, you know, fiber reinforced plastic. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. These are used in manufacturing the blade, and the blade is manufactured on a specific material science which go through from, from the beginning and that there are changes in the materials used also. Even the method of manufacture is changing. So this is the improvement which is taking place over, when you see the 80 meter, 82 meter blade, what I showed you, they yeah. are also now these days blades are coming in two sections. That means take the blade in two sections and take it to the site and assemble the blade as two piece. Of course this, these are not still popular but slowly it is coming so the technology of making the blades are also changing thank you sir thank you very much sir you give very good presentation sir thank you very much thank you sir yeah yes sir of the turbine, which can be kept on our roof. See, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't cover the small turbines at all. I considered all the turbines to get connected to the grid. The small turbines are there. It is totally a different chapter altogether. I am not really dealing so much on it, but I can give you small information. Small turbines are also manufactured. Even in India, they are manufactured as low as 250 watts, 2 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, 25 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt. So depending on what is best suited for your house, you can buy those turbines and put it. Unfortunately, the market has not matured for the cost advantage. Today, government is encouraging for hybrid situation where a small turbine combined with a solar power and with a battery it is encouraged with almost getting you 50% subsidy. These type of projects are also coming, but unfortunately the price of the turbines are not still optimized as much as what has happened in the larger turbines, especially the grid connected for which I made the presentation. Yes, I agree. Other countries have these particular small turbines very popular. USA is the largest one. For information, the turbines are sold like what you buy like a mixie, you go to a department store, you pick up a mixie and you plug it. And that is the technology what it has matured in other countries. People do their own installation by providing the mask near the roof, connect it and mount these small turbines and generate the power. Please also understand it is economical only when the power is generated and also when is excess power available when you don't consume and if it is given back to the utility then only it is economical. Unfortunately in India that principle of accounting which is called net metering has still not come. We have been debating about it. Many of the regulating commissions are talking about it. Net metering is when you have a wind power and you don't have electricity consumption at home you are at home or you may not be at home, power is generated, you don't have any 
power which is connected for any equipment even the house may be locked so what do you do with that power if you use battery as the only source today what people are using the battery gets charged <coughs> like any ups system but when the battery gets charged only up to a particular time of usage afterwards whatever the power is generated it is getting wasted so net metering is the one which will allow the power what gets generated beyond your consumption goes back to the utility and your meter will be rotated in two different directions it is called bidirectional meters which are still to come to usage in india of course the turbines what i showed they all have the net metering when i said you generate a power and when you don't generate the power in the low wind condition it is kept alive it is drawing the power so net metering principle is already used in large turbines unfortunately they are not used in the small turbines that net metering once it comes i think the small turbines will become popular and then proper volume of production will take place the cost has to come down you know earlier days people used to always import the mixi they used to come in bombay airport or everywhere you used to see people carrying mixis bringing from other countries because you want to use at home today nobody is being in the mixi india we are able to make it coimbatore it's a cottage industry that means the mixis are produced to suit the indian grinding conditions so how does it possible it is only possible when the volume picks up so in india also we need to go to that stage of production volume where the cost will come down and these small turbines will become economical and that will be really advantages to use at home i hope i answered somewhat to your question thank you any other question from other nodal centers yes satyam group of institute sir your external mic is mute sir your voice is not audible no sir still not audible switch on the mic mic no sir st it's still not working meanwhile any other centers have any any questions some of the pictures of the small turbines for your information how variety of types are there in the world i don't know whether you can see and get a glimpse of it just i wanted to share with that so thank you so much and uh, i think satyam group of institute they can ask a question during the next se next session and uh, so on behalf of participants and department of rural development i am extremely thankful to engineer as karant who has enriched us with this informative talk on the significant aspects of wind power and wind turbines so we'll meet him again after 15 minutes he'll give a he'll give a talk on wind power development in india and its challenges so kindly join us back after tea break after 15 minutes Thank you.